again. Um, okay, today I'm going to be doing a venipuncture video because I haven't done a venipuncture video and I've been asked to do one. So um, just uh, simulating the whole idea of venipuncture, what I'd like to do first is go over the tourniquet. I think that um, you should really practice a tourniquet before you even attempt any IV access type of procedure because it's the first time you actually are in contact with the patient and they can feel whether you're confident or not. So I do recommend that you have a bit of a fiddle and become a little bit of a ninja expert at using um, tourniquets. I don't mind putting the tourniquet on for quite a while and giving that sort of arterial blood a chance to convert to venous blood and help me engorge the vein. I want to show you two different types of um, butterfly cannulas that we use. Um, this is actually my favourite butterfly cannula. It's a, um, a retractable needle and uh, it's, a, it's a BD one which seems to be a bit of a go-to. Uh, you can screw this on. The thing I don't like about this, depending on how you hold your butterfly cannulas, like I hold mine with the wings, but if you hold yours there, you've just got to be really mindful that there's actually a button there that uh, will actually cause the needle to, to eject back in and you can't use it again. So there is a syndrome for this and um, can you remind me what it's called yeah, again? Yeah, premature retraculation. Correct. So we don't want premature retraculation. It's a very embarrassing thing that can happen to anybody. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to um, swab the vein and I'm going to go in. I've actually got my barrel all ready to go and I'm going to just give a little bit of a stab and you can see a little bit of blood going in. So with my technique that I use, I'll hold the butterfly wings down and I can also hold the patient if they're flinching or whatever and if they're non-compliant, um, I can actually just help that needle stay exactly where it is and then we can just get some blood sample out into your vacutainer, which is a really good system. Okay, once that's done, it is safe to retract the needle. Um, one time, I, I used to take the needles out and then retract the needle, but uh, a blood pathology collector did it this way, where she retracted the needle while it was inside, and it didn't hurt. And since then, I've actually been doing it that way. So that's that butterfly cannula, and we can dispose of that. And this is this butterfly cannula. And again, um, I'm a bit of a fan of these as well. Um, so I like the, the safety features of it. The other reason why I really like this, and you can do it with this butterfly cannula as well, but what I like to do, especially on a particularly difficult vein, is I like to put a syringe on the end of it. And uh, the reason why is that I can use that negative pressure to locate the vein if I do miss. So again, swabbing the area with a uh, alcohol wipe, going through and feeling that pop. And then what I can do now is I can still stabilize this and then I can aspirate the syringe to get my blood sample. Once that's done, same sort of thing. You can take the needle out and then you just pull that yellow cap up and now that needle is quite safe. And a um, very important part of the procedure obviously is to let the tourniquet go, put a nice dressing on the patient, send your blood sample off to pathology. But what we are looking at is that we're looking at your disposal of your sharps whether it's for an OSCE or whether you're just in the hospital and the infection control people or your clinical supervisor watching you, you just have to make sure that you don't reach into your injection trays and dispose of your sharps correctly. So it is about safety and about accuracy and about really, really knowing your equipment. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.